potatoes today. We said largest beta lizard ever possibly. Look at the size of this thing. Holy cow, this thing is huge. I'm weighing it, I'm telling you, it's heavier than any part of my body. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, so tell me a little bit about this guy. Oh yeah, here. He is right around seven years old. Mm -hmm. His name's Rio. Rio. He's a Mexican beta lizard. They are one of two venomous lizards in the world. Them and the Gila monster. Right. He is a real forte. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, he's. I've had him for right around two years. He's going on seven years old. He's a big, big boy. I know. I'll say a lot of Gila's, and this is. I mean, they're so related. Substantially wow. heavier. So much bigger. They're very good at climbing. So see, they have these claws that are just. I can feel. Built for climbing up trees <laughs> more. They're a lot. They're a lot more. Uh, Built for climbing than the Gila. Right. They're they're very 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 cool. But a very similar feel. It's just larger. Same so thing. Much larger. Same thing. Just much like larger. Different and coloration. So Same we, venom. We put them down. And let them run around. Yeah, a little bit? let's put them down. Because I can feel like you're getting angry at me. There you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> That's my man right there. So with this guy, how long have you had? You see, seven years old. Have you had him that entire time? I've had him two years. A friend of mine had him for. Three years before then, yeah, he's giving you all the nice scars. Oh yeah. Um, I've had my friend had him for about three years before I had him. Like I said, yeah. I've had him two years. Um, I think he's going on seven years old right now. Okay. So my friend got him when he was already, you know, pretty grown. And now being in this reptile shop, he seems pretty used to people. He doesn't really seem to mind us being around here, around him at all. You know, he's making a little noise. That's pretty common for this species, Very correct? Yes, sir. They're uh. They do more of the hiss. They just they don't they're not fast, so that's why they've adapted to have that venom is because they get picked on in the wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So their their venom, as opposed to the rattlesnakes, the rattlesnakes is to break down the food, you know, help aid in digestion. These dudes they do it mainly for defense. So their venom is mainly just used for defense. It's not as much used for feeding and anything like that. Um, so anything that has that defensive venom is usually pretty painful bite. Because the things that they eat, they just overpower. They don't really need the venom for that. They just thrash them around, beat them up against the wall a little bit, but that's how they mainly kill things. They don't usually use the venom. Almost like a kookaburra. Like, yeah. Beat yeah, you yeah, until you die. Throw it up in the air and thrash them around a little <laughs> bit. He's a um, he's he's a very powerful dude. He's just he's one of the coolest lizards I've uh, had the pleasure of oh. working with. Oh yeah, I I dig this thing, you know. And I don't have a, a heel at work beat in my private collection, but it's something that's on my list to get. It's something I really want. And I've, I've got to work with helos. We've had them in our zoo before. Uh, I've had some fun. This is the first beaded lizard I've ever got to film. With. First one sure, I got cool. to lay hands on. So this is an all new experience for me. So thank you. And for I uh, I appreciate that, man. This this is this lizard means a whole lot to me. He's he's not just a pet. He's definitely I don't know. He's like more like a child to me. So would never oh, yeah. trade him for the world. I'm glad that he you know, can get some notoriety because he's a pretty big dude. He's, I've I've seen a lot of beaded lizards. I've been around a lot of them. Um, well, let's say just for scale, this hook would be about a three foot hook, correct? Three foot. So you can lay this here. I'll put the sharp end. Don't bite it. And you can kind of look. He's every bit as long, if not a little longer than that hook. Yep. So you've got over three foot, or right about three foot of, of beaded lizard here. Uh, and then the weight is pretty good. So what's his diet like? So his diet consists of mainly eggs, turkey, the ground turkey, we did little turkey balls. Mm -hmm. And then this morning he ate about two small rats. So okay. we just go back and forth and try to give him a little bit of a variety. Um, he seems to do real good with the turkey. It's like try chicks and stuff like that. But. So I know the heels in the wild will raid nests and things will eat a lot of like hey, trip. and birds. Um, Matt is one of the owners. He doesn't necessarily work there per se. Which place? Not here. No. Nothing about Manhattan Reptile World. Yeah, we're not at Manhattan Reptile World, though. If you joined us late, we're in Las Vegas on a little vacation, and we like to check out some other places at Las Vegas Fish and Reptiles. Really cool store. But we're going to kind of take a walk around and see some other stuff here in a minute. But I wanted to start with this guy because he is just, you're not going to see this anywhere else. Like, if you come here, he's right up front, he's on display. So if you're out of in Las Vegas and you know you need to, like, sober up a little bit or you need to uh, take a break from the strip and gambling, come out here. Check out some animals. Check this guy out right here. Rio, correct? He loves Rio. We let Rio. him bring him out. Usually people ask. We bring him out. We let him touch him. Make sure the bitey ends away from everybody. Right. Do it safely, of course. But what but shocks me is how sharp those claws really are. Very sharp. That's you why know. I don't let people hold him too often. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. he will shred you up. He's got to be like, well, it's happening. It's yeah, cool. and then I try, to, I try to let him walk around here to um, 
to grind down the nails a little bit more because you know it follows them down and keeps them manageable. Because if you don't, he he starts to grow them and they they don't really get anything. Now, before we go around the store, can I show some other cool stuff? You've got some of this trash can. This is another animal that I've never gotten to work with, there but uh, I've worked with a lot of similar ones. This is kind of the top level of this. I don't want to say species, here. but this subspecies, I guess you'd call yep. it, this whole genre. So why don't you go ahead and open up and tell us what we yes, got here, sir. man. So this is a Mojave green rattlesnake. Crotalus scutalis. I have a really hard time saying it. I'm not allowed to speak to you. It's <laughs> Mojave green. That'll work. It's a Mojave green. This dude is about three years old. He's part of a pair of mine. He, uh, he was captive bred by a friend of mine. And just been growing up trying to breed them and you know make sure they're healthy I love these dudes they're some of my favorite some of my favorite rattlesnakes to have I have about four of them right now these are my only two breeders him and his girlfriend are my only breeders so. you can tell he's captive bred because whenever you're around the wild ones you're this close to the rattle non-stop and they sit there you can actually find them sitting on the side of the road sitting there striking at cars I know Crazy, yeah they sit it? there and just strike at cars because they'll they are very cantankerous. They don't. They know what they've got. They got some good venom, and they know. They know they got it. Now you mentioned the good venom. So talk about the venom on these things because it's different than a western, right? Much different. It's much different. They have a double toxin, so they've got a type A venom and a type B venom. Um, the type A is more of a neurotoxic. I actually I don't know between the, the different two different types. Which one it is? The, right. Yeah, but they're definitely they have two. They have another part to their venom compared to the western diamondback. Right. So they have two toxins instead of just the one main toxin. Um, so they are pretty toxic. They have a very good cardio toxin. <laughs> so you're, you're talking, you know, they're hemotoxic and they're going to be neurotoxic. Neurotoxic. For most rattlesnakes, I think the only other one I know of that carries much neurotoxin is Timbers can, Timber. I don't know where they're from. But this is way stronger. Way right? stronger. Way so stronger. And they usually all have that, that, that pretty uh, toxic vent, neuro. Yeah. Yeah. So drop for drop, unless I'm missing something. This is the most toxic rattlesnake on the planet. They're about 16 times more venomous than a sidewinder. So yeah, well, there you, you go. You go there. They're probably about 10 times more venomous than a western, I'd say. Wow. And they don't they don't have the same venom production oh, as a western, but they don't need it. Because don't it's need it. So hot. This can give you a way worse of a bite. You can see him right here. Take a western over him any day. He, they don't have that big of a head, so they don't have the big of a venom glands. Right. Much smaller than a western, as compared to my western over there, my big girl. Yep. Huge head, huge venom yield. Every time she tries to bite a, a hook or anything, it goes everywhere. Yeah, it's dripping. Venom and and dripping. And it's With them, I, they bite. They don't really produce too much. But man, it's kind of like the difference between a beer and a whiskey. You know, yeah. that thing's putting out beer. This thing's putting out whiskey. Exactly. You don't need near as much to cover. It <laughs> don't too. need this. Do the a, same thing. I'm a little hungover. No, I'm kidding. I'm really not that hungover. I, it was a little bit of a rough night last night. I stopped early. Uh, and nothing today, because here's the thing, too. If you're going to have these open at all, what's one thing you don't want? Nope. No alcohol. No, uh, no. I am staying this morning, even though I'm in Las Vegas. That's how much I wanted to do this. Uh, <laughs> that's that's rare. love them. These are, these are uh, fun animals, and you don't really see them too often. Especially here around town, there's not that much education about them. And especially it's weird because they're so common around this area. So common. Now, you go out towards like the M Casino, mm -hmm. back towards, uh, towards California. Right. Everywhere. They're all the way out there behind the M Casino. Now, if. You're talking common in this area, like what would be the time you'd run across these? Is this the season for them or is it uh, still too cold? About the season. It's a little too cold. Starting at the be mid of mid April, okay. you'll really start to see them coming out of their dens and you know. So that's when they'll start to break out and be common. Break yeah. out and they're much more active when they first come to out. To me the look is always similar to prairies. I prairies. see a lot of prairies, you know, so they, they just have the same kind of pattern, but getting to be close, I think the head's different in the coloration a little bit than most prairies I've seen. And then the color is, you get that more greenish. Yeah, you know? it's a very, he's a little dark. His girlfriend, on the other hand, is very light and very green. Well, I think We're the gone. contrast is higher on these than on the prairie as well, yeah. looking in person. So. Now, are there yeah. other items in the shop? Wow. Absolutely. We want to see some other items? Yeah, yeah. let's just do some more items. I'll show you one that I got to see a little earlier. This thing's really cool. It reminds me of what we used to have that we unfortunately lost at our shop. Uh, and that is the Wrangler one. Move our little reptile. Maybe doing some feeding. So this thing here, we'll go ahead and slide this. Oh, I can't. It's locked. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you. Open. Safety first. Safety first. I can't argue that, right? Have and Trip, He's got you had asked here. about um, turtle caves. I think you're gonna want to call the shop directly. We don't. I don't. We don't know the inventory offhand. No. Yeah, we got a lot. A lot of stuff coming. 
So you can see how friendly this one is. So rhino iguanas are kind of cool. They're not your typical green iguana or red iguana. These are an entirely different thing altogether. Uh, but I'll let you kind of talk about your rhino iguana and, and what you want us to know about okay, it. Okay, this is Rihanna. Rihanna the rhino iguana. Rihanna. She is very, very nice sometimes. She goes crazy over food. Oh. They're actually an endangered species, the rhino iguana. So they come from um, the Haitian. They come from Haiti. I don't know Haitian. <laughs> they come from Haiti. And, uh, ooh. What is the other island that Rihanna and Rhino Iguana come from? Uh, it's a from very uh, small island. It's, not, uh, it's near Galapagos, that's all I remember. Now. Yeah, I think it's one around there. It's, it's, it's only one island that they really yeah, it's primarily in, come in from. In that area. Oh my gosh, what a puppy dog. <laughs> what a so puppy dog. So you've got a Rhino Iguana, and then of course you've got a really large retic. Now, in asking earlier, this particular retic is like most retics. In the cage, it's going to be, I guess, a little gnarly, but outside it's a puppy. Beautiful. Right? She, she comes out all the time. And about how many feet would you say this is? She's about 14 feet. We weighed her, or measured her the other day. Okay. So that's good size. Very good size. Yeah. She weighs right around roughly like 90 pounds right now. She's uh, She eats many, you know, two to five pound pigs. Yep. So that's what she's feeding on about every three weeks. And how old is she? She is coming up on like five and a half years old. I got her when she was four and a half. I've had her about a year. One thing I really like to see with her too is, I remember as a kid, there'd be these two traveling trails. I don't know if they ever came this way. Uh, they were always sort of like Walmarts. And one of them had a couple alligators and a bunch of snakes. Those came out, heaviest snakes in the world and this and that. And, they're just, and you know, as a kid, I didn't know any better. So we're going to these trailers and I thought it was cool, but they had retics in there. My hand's in the way, huh? <laughs> they had retics in there that would be so overweight because they're just overstuffing them for weight. Exactly. And, and so here you're seeing 14 foot, the, the right body size the and condition. The right weight. You know, the right weight. They, they don't need to be three, 400 pounds. They shouldn't be three, People feed pounds. them rabbits, you know, weekly, and it's just, it, they will get very fat. And they'll get, and it really gets really hard on their liver. Right, because this is an active snake in the yeah. wild. So they're more of a thin body. I mean, every time you get her out, here. she's non-stop around yep. this door. She will not stop trying to just have fun. And she knocks stuff over, I bet, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. she, de she doesn't really want to. She just... <laughs> and then we've also got over here, we've got some westerns. We've got one that's, that's feeding right now. It's not swallowing, but it's in there. That is an albino western. And then you got a traditional western. This is a pretty dark color. She's a pet for here. albino. She came okay. from the same parrots as, parents as him. Not parrots, parents. Um, so she's she's a pretty come from a pretty good bloodline. Awesome. She's het for albino. She's got some, some pretty cool colorations. And that dude down to the bottom, bottom left, that is a great basin. That's a crotalus, a lutosis. See, that's another one I've never worked with. So that's really cool to see. And again, it's a smaller species, kind of similar to uh, not in look but in size to the banded rock. Yep. A little bigger than the banded rock, but the lepidus. The lepidus, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then, of course, over here, you got most of your stuff that's for sale. And you carry, like, you know, you've got your, your I don't know, yeah, like big bearded dragon somewhere around here. I've got my mama beardy right here. She actually has clutch of eggs, so we'll have a bunch of beardies. We'll have some orange beardies oh, coming in here. There she is. She's just a very fun one. She likes to make a mess of everything. Uh, just, this just caught my here. We have, we have a green anaconda. That's awesome. He just so, sold. Another big boy. <laughs> He's going to have his, cool. uh, I have a breeding, uh, they're a breeding pair. I have his female. He actually sold to a good friend of mine. So we'll have some babies from them here within the next year. This is an extremely brightly colored one. Yep. It looks really nice. He's very fun. This is another one you don't see too often. See if we can see her. See if I can get together. Oh, look at me. I got a zip. This is a green anaconda. What? Oh, green. there she is. She's back there behind me. Close your stuff. Get some of this out of the way. So about how old is this one? She's, she's not too old. She is about a year, I want to say. Um, she's not too friendly. So we'll just say that. <laughs> Most anacondas <laughs> Most are. Most anacondas aren't too friendly. They kind of give you that uh, false sense of hope. You know, they'll oh, yeah. be cool for a second and they'll just turn They're around not. and nail you. We did used to have a male who was really big and he was a puppy dog. Yeah. I mean, you could take him out and walk around. I mean, he'd wrap up your leg and your arm at the same time, but he wouldn't. Never Welcome, Moto. Glad to I have you. These. This is one of my uh, one of my favorite dudes. I love green anacondas. I'm love in love with big snakes. Big so, snakes, rattlesnakes, all those. I also noticed this motley boa, and I just want you to show the tail on that. Their color is really cool. It's a really long stripe on the tail, so they're broken up. That's a really cool motley boa. Yeah, thank you. Because not all of them have that same look. Nope. So, you know, and then this has got sun glow boa. These are really cool too. This is a sharp sun glow. So let me see. Get him out. 
So sharps, what we're talking about is there's two different lines of albino, and you need the albino to make the sound look, correct? Yes. So my boa genetics are not near as strong as my python yeah. genetics, mm -hmm. so I'm making sure I know what I'm talking about on that one. Oh, wow. That's pretty. Pretty beautiful snake here. Hold on. I keep zooming in for <laughs> some reason, and that's not what I'm wanting to do. There we go. Check that out. Really cool. Yeah, you're good looking. We like this one. <laughs> good size on it already too. You see that spinner pied that we have over there too? I, I did. did see the spinner pied. That's a nice one. Let's nice check time. out that spinner pied. Cool, cool. Can you take it out then? Oh, play catch for a second. Yeah. Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, so the spinner pied is spider pen pied. Yep. That is correct. And that's Tammy. Trying to get some uh, attention back there. Oh, we're going to give her some attention. Yeah, that's our girl. That's beautiful. Thank you. No, no problem. And then even though this is fish and reptiles, there's an animal making noise. We've got to show you really quick. Something I do kind of want to hit up about this store. One, when you check this out, all the enclosures are super clean. One thing I love is that the genetics are broken down on the cages for the animals that are for sale. So that if you are looking at purchasing, um, you are able to see specifically what the genetics are. And then it looks like we have a question on, are there any white, northern white lipids here? Northern white, maybe white lipped? White lip pygons? Uh, Jojo, can you yeah. can you be Jojo. more specific? Any she's, northern white lipids? She's looking for a lipids. white lip, python. It's a white lip. I know what she's looking for. Yeah. Hey, Patrick. I had a couple in recently. Just they're they're not too common to find. They're not. They're kind but, of. But uh, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> let's let's look at this really quick. So then, all you talk about this is what is this? Because this is not a fish this or a is reptile. This our girl Tammy. Tammy the keel build toucan. She is a three year old. She eats. White lipid. We're looking for a white lipid. White lip. I guarantee you. Ice pod? Maybe. Both of ice pods. Could be. I know she likes white lipid. Yeah, here, JoJo, hit us up when we're done with the live. Well, we'll be on a Patreon live soon, too. So, so this is our girl, Tammy. Like I said she eats a wide variety of diet. You know, the two cans are very social animals in the wild. So they like companions. Hopefully, here soon, I'll have her a little boyfriend up front. She's actually in a temporary um, aviary back here because I just got her about a week and a half ago. So she's going to the vet tomorrow. After the vet's going on, her aviary is getting built up front and she'll be in here on display. You can stop by and feed her a blueberry and hang out with her. Very <laughs> awesome. And then, too, I just want to show off the artwork because I thought this would be really nice. It's something I would like to try to incorporate in our shop if possible. That's beautiful. It's my buddy Manny, actually. He's a really good friend of mine. He came in and spray painted it when I took all my animals out. And in here and let him get to work so he did this all in about two and a half days wow. isn't that gorgeous in. wow it's, it's japanese tattoo yep. Art, correct? yep he's very big and goes to japan all the time he actually tattooed tattooed my arm he's very good very talented dude all right guys before we and they also have a full line of enclosures which like yeah. what you could use for venomous melamine. Melamine enclosures melamine yes very nice very nice I, I carry vision i just don't tend to stalk them yeah. Um, I do deals with Vision where you can order and get you know get good deals with them. Can we spotlight some of these really cool? Um, they're not enclosures; they're yeah, enclosure. displays. This is an enclosure. Push pop I know? I think yes, we we, we need to kind of like spotlight that because it's hard to find cool displays for people it who is. are looking for them. I have first wood ones coming in too. Working on a new line of that. These are all melamine. They all have the fixtures included in them. And then sliding glass fronts, so we just don't put them on here because so we worry about the glass. So you got the fixtures, you've got, I mean, ventilation already built in, it looks like everything's ready to ventilation's go. Ventilation's all ready to go. These are, got, I like this because you've got the smart boreal yep. as well. So you got That's what she's in actually up here. So I've been working on them. These are these are great enclosures. We uh, we make sure everything's all good to go too. We, we fix them, we warranty them and all that. So. All right, well, before we hop off here and slide to Patreon, like we always do, do you guys have any questions for our, well, not for me, for these guys, actually. It's their shop. They know more than I do about it. There you go. And if you do, now's the time to ask. Question girl will let us know what you want to know. And uh, I who makes here, these like, enclosures? So they are a man by the name of j, j &M Cages and Reptiles. Um, he does only wholesale, so um, we can work on a deal. If anybody's curious, reach out to us. And uh, we do custom enclosures all the time in any different sizes, anything you want. So. 
And you can ship these, you said. Ship too, right? them and all, you can do it all. We can do any enclosure up to 10 feet long. So 10 feet long is pretty much the the longest that the melamine is sold in machining. So 10 feet is pretty much the and if overall. somebody did want a cage from you to get these shipped, what's the best way to contact you guys? Contact us. You can contact us on Instagram at Las Vegas Fish and Reptiles, just all spelled out. Or contact us at 702 483-3337. Excellent. Cool. I think yeah. we need to spotlight the last enclosure right behind you last because one. that's the one I was focused on. The one with all the uh, stands? Yes. 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 They are built into stands, so look at that one. You can uh, store everything under them. They're a little closed right now, so my one doesn't want to open. Yeah, but, uh, that's nice, too, because if you have, like, say you have some kind of lizards in here and you got, you know, calcium or bulbs or whatever you got, you got a place to stick it, some <laughs> stuff ain't everywhere. Exactly. If you were running a little bit bigger ones, I think you make these some bigger ones, too, right? This we case. make them under, we usually carry them. They're usually in here, but somebody came and bought them yesterday. I carry towers. We carry snake racks made by the same gentleman. So we do it all, really. Um, he built me all of these up at the front. So this is an 8 foot by 4 foot enclosure built by the same man. Nice. Like, look those drawers I was thinking is like with venomous yeah. stuff I know I've got a bucket I've got you know I probably couldn't put a trash can yeah. in one but I got a little no. trash can yeah I got multiple sizes of hooks I got a couple different pairs of tongs and you can have that all put away and all, spread all out exactly so, which yeah. is really nice because it starts to take over and then you're always looking where's my yeah, stuff at where's exactly. my feed tongs where's my you know my this? tongs I always seem to go yeah. trip do you have a specific question you have trip oh yeah all right guys well well, we're waiting since there's any questions. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and if she gets one, she'll shout it out to us. Yeah, but, go ahead, Trip. Yeah, What's your question? Know. It's almost like dead air. Dead air, I'm like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> you think she's got a good years. background? Yeah. She's still off the retake for dead air. That is our, that's our girl. She, I would take her out. See if we can. Let's do it. We're waiting on questions. Let's pull her out. Oh, uh, What's your most valued pet, Matt? Oh, Jangles. Oh, asking what our most valued pet is. Are you asking us as pet owners? Are you asking us as like shop owners? Are you asking Las Me Vegas too. Fish and Reptile? And Trip, we need a little bit more context to your question. Yeah, we'll probably give you both. Uh, mine, I'll let them give you theirs too. <laughs> so for me, it changes on a daily basis, to be quite honest, for what my favorite uh, reptile is. Uh, I really like, right now I've been really enjoying my <laughs> hyper melanistic western. As pet owners, what is Here, our favorite somebody. pet as pet owners? Okay, I'll be honest, it's my dog. <laughs> uh, can you be, which, which dog you have two? Both. Jack's with me for 15 years, man. Those guy's my buddy. We've, here, I'll bring her up. We've been ride here. or die. But Bo is pretty, he's pretty awesome. And that's just because they're, they're with me more often. Like, I'm always with them. But reptile pets, they're a little bit different than mammal pets. Right? A little different. They're a little different. And so, like, <laughs> I also love my, uh, my dwarf came in. And, you know, I love my, some of my ball pythons more than others. It's really hard to say. But let's let that go to you. What would be your favorite pet you have? Oh, it'd be a tie between Rio, my dogs, and Tammy back there. Yeah, it gets hard. When you get into <laughs> the animals, it's because you think, oh, I love this one. It's my favorite. Then you have another reason why this one is your favorite. Then a reason why this one is my favorite. You know, I, I almost forgot Reaper, too. Reaper was oh. the first venomous I ever had. I learned to work venomous on Reaper. Okay, so if you had to sell your reptiles and only keep one, what would it be? For me? Oh, man. Ooh. That's a hard one. That's a very hard question. It'd probably be Reap. Ooh, honestly, my first ever venomous. I mean, he's a wild caught timber out of, out of Stillwater, Oklahoma area, and we already custom made his cage and background and everything. And I just—he opened up a world of passion to me for venomous snakes. So I owe him. I, it's probably him because I owe him more than anything. Same with Rio. Rio was my first venomous animal in general. Okay, you just heard that, everyone. Sobek is available at some point. No, he's not. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching. We're going to hop over to PayPal. You guys got anything else you want to add really quick? No, definitely. This is, that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming down and checking all around. Oh, well, problem. thank you so much for showing off your shop. This is awesome. So we are here live at Las Vegas Fish and Reptiles yep. here in northern Las Northwest Vegas. Las Vegas. Northwest, Northwest Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. So again, that is Las Vegas Fish and Reptiles. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Oh. Yeah, this big girl right here. <laughs>